Hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We are George Watkins, the product marketing manager, cloud gaming and visual cloud at AMD. Uh, George, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, thank you for having me. Love this segment, accelerating game development in AWS Cloud, big topic on how the gaming developer environment's changing and how AMD's powering it. Let's get into it. So streaming remote, uh, working remote, flexible collaboration, all powered by the G4 AD virtual workstations has been a big part of success. Take us through what's going on there. Yeah, certainly. Um, so obviously from a, a remote working perspective, you know, there was a huge impact on um, collaboration and productivity for many industries out there. But a collaborative environment like game design, it was even more so. So first off, having to have these big bulky workstations shipped to local artists um, so they can actually carry on working was a, pr a massive nightmare for IT management. Making sure that they have the right uh, uh, hardware, the right resources, uh, the right applications and security. So it was a real mean task. And on top of that, working remotely also brings in other efficiencies when it comes to collaboration. So for example, um, working on a data set, um, as I mentioned before, it's a huge team collaboration effort when it comes to game development and um, using the same data set um, happens very, very often. So if you're actually working remotely and a um, artist, for example, pulled a data set um, you know, from a server, worked on it, then took it back up into the cloud, I'll tell you now, it, it takes some time to do. And at the same time, you might have one or two other artists trying to use that data set. And um, the problem or the big issue that comes here is version control. And essentially, because these artists are using the older version, there's creating errors, they're actually long uh, and keeping the actual production time longer. So it's very, very inefficient. And this is where the cloud really comes to in its own. First off, the cloud, and then obviously in this case, the AWS cloud with um, G, uh, G4 AD instances, um, really does um, bring the whole um, pipeline together. It brings the data sets and the virtual workstations, um, obviously, as I mentioned, G4 AD, uh, as well as all the applications into one place. It's all centralized. And from an IT perspective, this is fantastic. And actually sending out a workstation now is really, really simple. It's login details into an email, um, to your new staff. And there's some really great benefits as well from a um, staff perspective. Not only are they not tethered to a local workstation, they have the flexibility of work where they need to and also how they like to. But it's also really interesting about how um, they work on a day-to-day -day basis. So a good example of this is if a artist is using or working on a very, very heavy data set and the configuration from their um, uh, VM or, or virtual workstation isn't up to snuff because of the, such a large data set. All they need to do is call up IT and say, I need more resource. And literally in a couple of minutes time, they can actually have that resource. Again, improving that productivity, reducing that time. So it's really, really important. And, and just a final note here as well, you know, with having all that data and all that resource in the cloud, you know, version control tools um, you know, really do help bring that efficiency as it's all built into the applications and that data sets. So really, really exciting stuff. And ultimately, you know, bringing that um, uh, uh, productivity and um, reducing that time um, and error, uh, errors down. Yeah, I could see your point too, because you know when you when you when you don't bring it to the cloud, people are going to be bored, waiting for things to happen, and they say, oh, "I want to take a shortcut." Shortcuts equal <laughs> mistakes. So I can see that the exactly. the, the G four AD with virtual Control workstations is, is is cool because it's purpose built for for what you're talking about. So take me through how you see the improved efficiencies in the development pipeline with cloud computing around this area, because obviously it makes a lot of sense. Everything's in the cloud. You got the the instances there. Now what happens next? How does the coding all work? What's going on around the, the game development pipeline? Yeah, so um, so 3D applications today, um, particularly that use in the gaming industry, I'll be honest, they are still based on legacy hardware. And what I mean by this is that the applications um, typically require higher um, uh, CPU hertz. Uh, they are typically um, single threaded, uh, maybe some kind of multi-threaded uh, 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 functionality there. But generally, um, they are limited by um, what the traditional workstation has been. And, and obviously, why not? I mean, they've been built um, over um, you know, the last 10, 15 years to access that type of data. Now, that is all great, but it's not 
accessing what could be, you know, all the resources that are available in the cloud. And this is what's really, really exciting in my part. So ultimately what we're saying is that you have this great virtual workstation experience. You have all your applications running on there. You can be efficient, but then there's these really specific and really interesting use cases that are accessed in the cloud. And I've got a couple of examples. So first off, there's a feature inside Unreal 4 engine called Unreal Swarm. And this feature helps actually reduce the time it takes, uh, in this case, um, to bake light maps into autoscale, uh, um, to bake light maps um, into a game. And this is done by autoscaling the compiling in AWS Cloud. So for example, um, after making the amends to a light map, um, you know, we're ready to essentially recompile. But instead of doing this on a local workstation using the traditional CPU uh, and memory resource, uh, which you would expect to see in a workstation, and actually in this case, it takes around about 50 minutes to do. Um, when you actually use Unreal Swarm, you can assume um, the coordinator as part of this uh, functionality bursts the requirement or the actual uh, uh, compiling into the cloud. And actually in this case, it's using like 10 C, um, uh, C5A instances. So these are all um, CPU high performance computing um, instances. And because you have this ability to autoscale, um, you actually essentially bring that time, that original 50 minutes uh, down to four minutes. And this type of kind of functionality or this type of task that you would typically see with a 3D artist or uh, with a programmer, um, basically happens multiple times a day. So when you start factoring in a saving of 45 minutes multiple times a day, it starts really bringing down, you know, the amount of uh, time saved and obviously the amount of um, cost saved as well for that artist's time. So it's really, really exciting and, um, you know, certainly something to, um, you know, talk about. Yeah, I mean, that's totally cool. And I want I got to ask you since you're here because it brings up the question that pops on my head, which is, okay, what's the state of the art development um, trends that you're seeing because you know on the cloud side on non-gaming world it's oh shift left of security you know so you start to see more agile kind of uh, methods around what used to be different modules right so you mentioned compiling and acceleration what's going on in the in, in the actual workflows for the developers what are some of the cool things that you could share that that, that people might not know about that are important well, well, certainly it's really about finding, um, you know, those thirsty computational expensive and time consumer processes um, and actually moving them to the cloud. So um, really, you know, from, from a compiling standpoint, they are usually CPU bound. So essentially the, the GPU does all the work uh, when it comes to, um, you know, the, the viewport, you know, all that high rendering, um, you know, frames per second, that's what it's really designed for. And it does a very good job of that. Um, but actually the compiling aspect, the compute aspect is all done on the CPU side. And you know, the work that we've been doing with AWS and the team, uh, game tech team is actually finding certain ways of actually helping to reduce um, the compiling nature because ultimately that is always restricted by the amount of cores that you actually have on a local device. So um, again, another example is um, there's a company out there called Incredibuild uh, and they specialize in accelerating the development of that programming code. And obviously in this case, it's the, the game code. Yeah. And if an artist um, did a clean source code build on Unreal Engine 4, um, it would take approximately around about 60 minutes to do on a local machine. However, using the Incredibuild um, solution to accelerate that type of workload, it can complete it in just six minutes. Because again, it's auto-scaled out that compiling um, to several, in this case, 16 uh, C5A um, a large instances, which essentially reduces all that time it, uh, uh, time for the artist, freeing up the, uh, freeing them up to do more stuff. Yeah, and the more creativity is just the, it's a classic use case of the cloud. It's a beautiful thing. It just reminds me of how exactly. good this is because I mean, you think about what what you guys are doing, pushing the envelope with for allowing the, the creators. I mean, gaming is such a um, State of the art pressure point to make the high performance come better. So, I mean, it's it's uh, it it really is putting a lot of pressure on AMD and everyone else is to get faster and stronger because it truly is pushing state of the art in general. It's always been that way. If you look at the gaming world, this is a whole nother level. I mean, you're starting to see that. What what's your what's your view on that? I mean, if you look at the gaming as a as a tell sign for the trends and the tech side, better, faster, cheaper processors and speeds and feeds and how code's working between processors, GPUs and CPUs, all this is cool, all kind of new, if you will, um, and new patterns, new, new usage. What's your view on that? 
Well, well certainly, um, you know, cloud gaming is a really exciting topic. And, um, you know, we believe that cloud gaming with the um, introduction of um, various key elements are really going revolution, to uh, revolutionize the way that um, people are actually using play, uh, gaming and playing gaming and interacting with games. And what I mean by this is like, you know, today we can do cloud gaming. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic experience. Um, you know, you're usually um, uh, hardwired, you know, using a broadband um, connection to actually play those games. Um, and you, you tend to try and be close to an actual data center to actually reduce that latency. Um, however, this is only going to get better with the introduction of uh, 5G coverage um, and also um, just as important um, edge computing. And because of these two elements, what we're going to be seeing is very high speeds wirelessly and more importantly, low latency. And this is very important for, you know, that very dynamic cinematic gaming experiences. But not only this, what it can actually do is bring you know, 4K, 8K gaming um, to people wirelessly. It can also bring um, VR and AR exp uh, experiences wirelessly. Um, and it also it can access, you know, these new emerging technologies that are making, you know, higher fidelity um, gaming experiences like hardware ray tracing. All this can be done, you know, with these new technologies and it's incredibly, incredibly exciting. But more importantly, you know, what's really great about this is, you know, from a um, game publisher perspective, because it's actually helping them simplify their business um, processes, particularly from a game development standpoint. And actually, what I mean by this is, you know, if we take a typical example of what a game developer has to do for a mobile game, um, you know, there's certain considerations that they need to think about, um, you know, when they actually comes to developing and validating. So first off, they'll have to understand, you know, what type of um, OS to account for and actually what type of version of that OS to account for, um, what type of IPA um, that they're going to be building on. Um, and also, finally, what type of resources are actually on that endpoint device. So there's a lot of considerations here and a lot of testing. So ultimately, a lot of work to get that game out you know, to those gamers who might be on a couple of these different mobile platforms. However, when it comes to game streaming, it really does kind of change all this because ultimately what the game developer is actually doing is that they're developing and they're validating on one source. And that is going to be the server that is essentially powering that game streaming service. Because how game streaming works is that we essentially transcode uh, the actual game uh, via H.264 um, to a software client on any endpoint device. So this could be those mobile devices that I just mentioned. Uh, it can also be TVs. It can be consoles. Um, it, it can, you know, be even low-powered laptops. And what's very exciting is that, you know, from an end-user perspective, you know, they're getting the ultimate in gaming experiences. And, and usually these types of um, solutions are um, traditionally uh, um, you know, subscription based. So you're actually reducing the requirement of this kind of high end, um, you know, thousands of dollars of gaming solution or, or, or um, you know, simply a, a high end next gen console. All of this is actually being given to you and, and, and delivered as part of a game streaming service. So it's very, very exciting. And, you know, certainly we can see the adoption on both um, the game development side as well as the gamer side. Yeah, that's great. And that's a great way to put an end to this awesome segment. I think that business model innovation around making it easier and making it better to develop environment, that's just how they work. So that's good, check. But really the business model here, the gaming as a service, you're making it possible for the developer and the artist to see an outcome faster. That's the cloud way. Exactly. Cloud, and they double down on success and they can do that. So again, this is, this is all new and exciting and certainly, you know, the edge and having data <laughs> being processed uh, at the edge as well. Again, all this is coming going to create more goodness. George, thank you so much for coming on and sharing that insight with us uh, from the AMD perspective. And again, more power, more speed. You know, we, we always say bring on the, no one's going to complain if they get more compute. That's what I always say. So, Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, Absolutely. For, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, it's CUBE coverage here at AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.